So ladies and gentlemen, close out all of your tabs, sit up straight and get ready for a very enlightening, entertaining and educational. That's the third alliteration I'm going for. Facebook ads, free trading. So yeah, most of you guys know who I am, but for those of you that don't, my name is Iman Gadji. I run an advertising agency called IG Media. If you are an e-commerce or info product client, go check out the link in the description for the case study. Apply to work with us at the end. We would love to have you. So uh, apart from that shameless little plug, I also own a company called GrowAgency.com, which is actually the world's biggest education company for agency owners specifically. And that's pretty much all the stuff that you don't care about that I still need to say in order to sound credible. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Facebook ads, ultimate guide. Here's what we're gonna cover. Why advertise on Facebook and what we'll do for you, how to set up your Facebook and Instagram page, how to set up your Facebook business manager, how to create a campaign and how to optimize your campaign. So what to advertise on Facebook? You see, you've probably heard about this magic Facebook ads that will make you sound like crazy, but really are they as good as they are made out to be? Are they the right fit for you and potentially for your agency? Let's find out because they're definitely the right fit for myself, my agency clients, and we've spent more than $1.3 million on ads. Now, here's why I advertise on Facebook. First reason is for my clients at IG Media. Now we manage the advertising campaigns of our clients and we use Facebook to increase their sales. Secondly, I also do it for my company, GrowAgency.com. And we're also just about to roll out some ads for Gadgi, which is my clothing line. Once again, you can find all the links in the description. Now, the simple truth about advertising on Facebook is when done properly, it works. Now, this is fantastic if you run a business and even better if you run an agency because businesses out there will pay you to use Facebook advertising uh, as said to promote their business, drive more sales, drive more leads. But here are just some things you can achieve with it. Number one, sell more of your product slash service. You can advertise your product or service and send people to your website to purchase. You can use Facebook adverts to collect names, emails, phone numbers, etc., etc. You can actually promote your Facebook page, your Facebook post, your Instagram posts, videos, and increase engagement. And you can get more downloads of your app, send users to your messenger inbox or other objectives. Now, 99% of the time, you'll just be using the first two, sending people to your website and to generate leads. Okay, that is pretty much all we do for our clients. We. I guess we generate leads sometimes for uh, a funnel, but at the end of the day, the main thing that we're looking at is what sales we get for our clients. But why is Facebook so good? As well as being the platform with the most users, Facebook also has the best targeting options. Now, although it doesn't have as many as it used to, I'm sure some of you guys remember April, I believe it was March slash April of 2018, Facebook had its whole Cambridge Analytica scandal. Uh, after that point, some things just weren't the same. For example, lookalike audiences, although from our experience with clients, some reason 2020 lookalike audiences have kind of made a resurgence. And I also just realized some of you guys may not know what lookalike audiences are, but I'll reference that again later on in the video. But anyways, my point is, um, Facebook used to have way more targeting options. I can tell you that from firsthand experience, but nonetheless, their targeting options to this day are still better than any other of its counterparts. Now, as I said, although it doesn't have as many as it used to, Facebook still purchases data in order for, for its advertisers to be able to target its users more accurately. So it's easy to increase your budget and scale up your campaigns quickly. It said the main benefits are you can rapidly field test any offer or product with low budgets. Ad feedback will tell you uh, within days if it's going to work. Facebook has, and as I said, buys information from its users just so we can use it. You can go very narrow and target everyone that has a dog in your neighborhood or very broad and target just everyone that has a Facebook account, okay? But now with Facebook, you can either spend you know, $5. I mean, to be honest, you can even spend a dollar a day or you can spend $10,000 a day. In fact, you can spend up to $200,000 a day. I'm sure there's advertisers out there that spend more, but as far as I know, like just from my own knowledge, the, the biggest advertiser is spending between two and $300,000 a day right now on Facebook. Uh, and you can go uh, from one uh, to another within a few clicks. Now, once again, I'm probably gonna go on some little side tangents here. This is meant to be more of a beginner uh, uh, free training, but nonetheless, I like to pull from my experience from myself personally and my clients. I can tell you with Google, I mean, with Google, you can literally go from spending $100 a day on a campaign to spending $300 a day with one click and the numbers are gonna hold up. Whereas with Facebook, if you take um, the budget of a campaign, if you're doing CBO, which is campaign budget optimization, once again, or whether you're assigning the budget at the ad set level, once again, I'll get into that in just a little bit. My point is with Facebook, you can't scale from like 20 a day to 200 a day without throwing Facebook way off of balance. As I said, 
Google, it just has this ridiculous sturdiness to it, I guess you could say. Uh, as I said, you can just, I mean, you can throw those budgets around, you can ping pong them back and forth, up, down, and uh, it doesn't react in the same way that Facebook does. So that's just a little side tangent, let's get back into it. Scaling, as I said, once everything is pieced together, you can scale and scale, putting dollars into the machine and getting, I mean, two, three, sometimes even 20 times that amount of money back, okay? Now, here is an extremely quick glossary of all the things we're gonna be covering today. However, I'll be using a lot of technical terms in this video. My advice is that you click the link in the description below because I actually went ahead and created a grow your agency SMMA glossary. Um, so just go ahead and just open that in the tab next to you. So that way you can just check any terms that you don't understand. But here's just a couple lead. So it's an individual with an interest in what you're selling. You know, it's their contact information, which could be e uh, email, phone number, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, targeting. Now this is a choice of demographics and interests for an ad set. We got assets. And now that's just going to be the photos or the videos. Automation, removing manual work from any job or process. For example, you might automate sending invoices to clients. Budget this is the maximum amount you will be allowed. Uh, you allow an ad set or as I said, a campaign, depending on what level you're optimizing for uh, to spend. Okay. Now, before you even think about creating an, an advert, it's time to set up your Facebook and Instagram page. Now, this might seem like really basic stuff. And if you want to skip past this bit, just be my guest. But you'd be genuinely amazed at how little things like your Facebook page is set up can make a huge difference to the performance of your ads. I'll put in the description the first link you'll need to create a page on Facebook in the description below. Now, if you click onto that, you'll be brought to this page. 99% of the time, you'll wanna choose create a business for your brand. However, in limited circumstances, uh, you know, for example, with my personal Facebook page, Iman Gadji, you would choose a public figure instead. Now, I'll use this as a quick opportunity to remind you that Facebook is desperate to improve the quality of its adverts. And as a result, it has increased ever more stringent restrictions on advertising. So from, from the get-go, make sure you use your full brand name, real address, and phone number. As I said, Facebook over the past two years has been kind of bruised and battered uh, publicly in the media. And because of that, you know, that had trickle down effects to the advertisers. So just, I mean, look, if you're a local business running, it, it's not so much, it, you won't have to worry about it as much, but there's just simple, there's just such easy wins that you can do, as I said, like, making sure that you have all the right contact information, you have the address, like everything is filled out and, and everything um, aligns, okay, between your business manager, your pages, et cetera, et cetera. Another quick little side tangent, but this is a really important tip, is when it comes to payment options, Facebook really doesn't like it if your card gets declined. So I recommend for all of your clients, or for yourself personally, get it so it bills the bank account. Like it, it, it's a direct debit setup with your bank account because sometimes it happens where a client travels abroad and you know their fraud prevention thing flags up uh, or this or that and it just causes a bit of a nightmare. So it's better that uh, uh, Facebook bills it from their bank. The thing, one thing you never wanna do, never let a client or you personally never bill from a PayPal. Facebook doesn't say this, but I know for a fact that Facebook doesn't like pulling from a PayPal. At the end of the day, what Facebook wants is what every agency owner wants, which is smooth billing process and not to have any uh, accounts receivable. Okay. And it wants to make sure that its cash flow is as streamlined as, as humanly possible. And it knows like people hold money in their bank account more than they hold money on in their PayPal, more than they hold um, uh, more than the credit limit that's allowed on their credit card. Okay. So as I said, that's just something that, you know, you'll learn you learn through years and years of experience. Okay. Um, so things like that, just making sure that as I said, everything checks out, everything is aligned. I'm, I'm going to give you some other, uh, secret hacks and secret tips in just a second to make sure that you're in uh, Facebook's good books. Okay. Because that will only lead to better results as an advertiser. Next thing is you need to set up the basics for your page. You want to head over to Canva and just use their free tools to create a simple cover photo as well as profile photo. So just take some time to get the dimensions right as this is gonna appear in every advert you serve. Next, you wanna set up your Instagram account. Now you need to remember the same principles as your Facebook page. Input the correct contact information, use a high quality profile picture and a clear bio. You'll need to create, uh, sorry, you'll need to convert your account into a professional account. You do this by going to settings account and then switch to professional account. You'll be prompted to choose between a business or creator brand. Once more, you wanna choose a business account. Now, once you've done this, you need to connect your Instagram account to the Facebook page you've just made. Now, now here are some secret tips, as I said. Invest in page likes. Ladies and gents, Facebook favors more established pages over new ones, so this is an easy way to gain credibility. All you have to do here is look at countries that have a, a much, much lower CPM than whatever your base. So countries like uh, India, uh, Nepal, 
um, uh, maybe Venezuela, like, you know, those sorts of countries just have lower CPMs, you know, it's cheaper to advertise there. So you do that and you set the language to English and for around $50, all you do is you just go on camera and you go uh, press like if you work hard, you know, just something that prompts people to press like uh, in order to uh, in agreement to something or, or, or something along those lines. And as I said, it's very easy to get 5,000 page likes for literally $50. And that has a positive effect in Facebook's eyes. And we've even noticed it where that'll on a brand new page, that'll actually lower the CPM, right? So how much it actually costs to advertise this. And there is, Facebook has an algorithm and most of it is dictated by the market. But at the end of the day, they have their own um, things they put in place. Like there's even something in the past year, if you have a bad, um, I think, I don't know what the actual term is, but it's something along the lines of like a bad uh, satisfaction score. I think it's actually called satisfaction score. So this is something that uh, once ever we had to face with one of our e-commerce clients uh, where for some reason they were just getting flagged as a bad satisfaction score, um, which kind of sucked. So that was something we had to work through and, and get them to a point where they were having a really good satisfaction score. Uh, but my point is there's certain things that Facebook, yes, the market dictates the price of advertising in general, but there's certain things that Facebook will do as said to kind of um, demotivate what in their eyes, what they uh, uh, deem as like bad advertisers uh, to advertise. Okay. Basically Facebook incentivizes, incentivizes good behavior. Just remember that next thing is set up an auto response. Okay. You want to monitor, uh, monitor your Facebook inbox, setting up an auto response to ask people to contact your customer service email, because as I said, some people will be uh, hitting up your Facebook pages uh, inbox. Just set up an autoresponder as said uh, to tell people, no, actually go to my business's customer support email. Next thing is set up comment moderation. The more you spend, the more comments you'll attract. Positive engagement is great, but negative comments can ruin even the best of adverts. So how to set up your business manager. Now, at the very top of the structure is your business manager. Now, anyone can set one up. This will be the hub of everything you do as an advertiser. You can have multiple pages, users and ad accounts within your business manager. You can also connect your business manager to another one. So as an agency, you'll be able to partner up with another business's business manager to advertise on their account. Again, I've left a link to create a business manager in the description here. Once more, you'll want to follow the same steps as you did to set up your page. But bear in mind that this business uh, might also represent your agency or a larger business rather than just being the brand you've used for your page. Now, after you've created your business manager, the first thing you want to do is connect the pages you've just created to do this very simple. You'll head over to the business settings of your business manager, click the three lines that kind of look like a burger at the top of the screen. And this drop down menu will appear and then click in the middle option of the column, which is business settings. Now that you're in the business settings section, have a look around and get comfortable here. This is where you can control all the assets of your business manager owns or has control to. Next, you'll need to click on pages and then just press add. You'll be given the option to add a page. Now, if you just created one, you'll be an admin. And as long as it doesn't already belong to another business manager, you'll be allowed to claim it for your own business manager. Now, if you're working with a client, you'll need to request access to a page. You follow the same process for Instagram, clicking Instagram accounts under the accounts heading, just, you know, then go ahead and add your account and you'll just need your username and password. Now, after claiming your pages, you'll want to create an ad account. Now, both, most businesses have one ad account. So if you run your own business, you'll need to set one up for yourself. If you're running ads on behalf of a client, you'll need to make sure that they have one created in their business manager that you request access to. And I recommend you, you get them to add you as a partner. Okay. So if you go look on the left side, you are just that users tab where it says people and partners, it's best thing you can do is uh, yeah, get them to add you as a partner um, of their business. Also, another thing that I mentioned there about the ad account thing is, and this is somewhere in the past six to 12 months, I know Facebook changes because before you were able to just have your business manager and you were able to ha have five ad accounts and you were able to just create them all at once. And you can actually have two business managers. So you can have two business managers, 10 ad accounts, and these are just backup ad accounts. And that's always very useful to have. That said somewhere within the last, I don't know, six to 12 months, Facebook decided that you need to spend at least like five or $10 um, in order to unlock more ad accounts. So if you have an ad account, just literally spend five, or, like just, it doesn't even matter what you like advertise your agency website or this, or like, it doesn't really matter. You know, you can just even do like a brand awareness ad, um, but just spend five or $10 so you can unlock the extra ad accounts and have the ability to create those extra backup ad accounts and creating your pixel. Okay. Now your next job is to set up your Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel is probably uh, the greatest yet most complicated thing to ever to happen to Facebook marketers. The truth is though, it's just a simple bit of HTML code that is embedded in your website. 
It has a couple of jobs. The first one is to track what visitors to your website are doing and if they are actually completing an action or purchasing a product. The second is to associate your website visitors with Facebook and Instagram users. Now this is a great way of assembling a retargeting audience of people you know are already interested in your brand. Now to create one, you need to go expand data sources on the left hand column, choose pixels and then click add. Give your pixel name and type in the name of your domain. Now, at this point, Facebook will suggest methods of automatically integrating your Facebook pixel with your website. Now, for most websites like uh, Wix, Squarespace, et cetera, et cetera, this is simple to install. Now, this is actually a screenshot of uh, our ClickFunnels account, and all it takes to copy and paste the code that Facebook will give you is to go into the head tracking code of the website or the funnel and just press paste. So here's another thing. If you are like, let's say you're running ads for, uh, or sorry, um, you're trying to track, uh, let's say Calendly or lead pages or click funnels or this or that, like it doesn't matter what you're trying to uh, track. All you have to do is just open up the head tracking code of that software or service, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and just paste that in. And once it's in, then there you go. It's in there and it's tracking. But to make sure that your Facebook is indeed installed correctly, check the link in the description for the video for the Chrome uh, Facebook Pixel Helper. Install this in your toolbar and you'll be able to check if the Pixel is firing on your website. Here's some more great agency secret tips. Set up multiple ad accounts. As I said, if, you, uh, if one ad account gets shut down, you'll need a backup. Next thing, never use your own card for a client's ad account. As I said, always use your client's credit card for ad spend. Even better, get them to hook it up to their bank. Uh, and as I said, never bill your clients ad spend with your retainer because you just don't want to be in that nightmare situation where let's say you're billing your clients like 2000 for ad spend and you only end up spending 1500 because spending any more than that, you just be wasting ad spend or things are going really well and you want to spend 3k that month. And it's just like you're, you're handcuffed because you got to wait until the client pays the additional amount, this, the, et cetera, et cetera. Just trust me, your client puts their information inside of Facebook and you're just advertising on their behalf. Next thing is set up domain verification. Ladies and gents, I've said this already, but Facebook favors legitimate advertisers. So domain verification is an easy way to demonstrate this. So uh, how to create a campaign. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and break down um, the difference between a campaign ad set and ad. Okay. So campaign. Now this is where you choose your marketing objective. You would usually have one campaign per offer your ad set. Now this is where you choose how much you're going to spend a day. And as I said, this depends on whether you're doing um, campaign budget optimization or at um, at your you're doing, uh, you're setting the budget at the ad set level. Okay. But I'll, I'll go into that in just a second, but this is where you, uh, set how much you're going to spend a day. Where do you want it to show up? And who do you want your ads to be served to? Next thing is ad. This is exactly what your users will see on their desktop and phones. It is composed of images, video, uh, text, a headline and a call to action. Ladies and gents, I think the easiest way for me to illustrate this, and I really just want to uh, drill you in with a few lessons here is at my agency, there's a lot like we take over from like some of our clients have worked with agencies prior to us. And then we take over from a failing agency. And the number one way that I know that in the last agency, didn't know what they were doing, or they thought that they were too clever is by the fact that sometimes they'll have 25 different campaigns. Okay. And it took me, I'd say for the first six to eight months of advertising on Facebook, I didn't really truly understand the difference between a campaign and ad set and an ad. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you guys what we do at our agency. Uh, and hopefully this will kind of illustrate the point at our agency. We only ever have three campaigns, Boreas, Apollo and Contiki. Now Contiki, if you guys know the story of Contiki for us, that campaign is all about exploration, uh, trying new things. Uh, Apollo is about accuracy. So it's about retargeting, retargeting. You all think about the bow and arrow Apollo, the king of cold. So cold audiences, you won't call your campaigns this. Okay. It's just cause we're a bunch of nerds in my agency. Um, what you will call your uh, campaigns are just cold retargeting and testing. Okay. I see this all the time where you, you know, we will come in with an agency and they just have so many different campaigns and ad sets and none of it makes sense. The only thing you need is three campaigns, cold retargeting and testing. Okay. Now, if your client has multiple products, like let's say they have a mid tier product and then they have a high ticket product, technically you'll want a cold retargeting and testing. So you'll, you'll in, in that case, you want six campaigns, right? So three for product, high ticket product, and then three for mid tier product. Now for us personally, as advertisers and as an advertising agency, we actually like to, if they have two products, we actually like to do that in a different ad account. Okay. We like to split off the ad accounts that way. All right. But for you, it may not be worth it or you may decide to do things differently. Then in that case, you'll have six campaigns, 
cold retargeting and testing, but then for, let's say like they're two different products. Okay. This is a little different if you have like an e-commerce, um, you're working with an e-commerce company or whatever. I'm talking brands, either info product businesses or brands, um, where really like they only have one or two products. That's the way we structure things. Um, but anyways, back to my point. So we keep things simple. There's only pretty much most of the time, three campaigns. Okay. Within those three campaigns, we might have anywhere from five to 50 different ad sets. Okay. Now the ad set level is really where the magic happens in terms of figuring out what works and what doesn't work. Here's the thing. I see so many experts and gurus and this and that, and they just have no idea what the hell they're talking about. And I think it's probably because like, just to be very honest, I don't know anyone who's a guru or an expert or this, that who like actually still actively runs an agency. So yeah, I think they just saw a video once and, and just ever regurgitated some BS, but running ads for your clients is like being a scientist. Okay. And when you are running a scientific exper experiment, what is the most important thing that you have constant variables and you only have one variable that has changed. So I see this all the time where people will have all these different ad sets and like they're like the, like the demographic targeting is different, you know? So like in one ad set they're targeting, like, let's say, let's say uh, you're running ads for like a luxury men's um, uh, sunglass line. One thing that we would do in our agency. So we have our, our cold campaign. And then within that, like, let's say we might have an ad set and we might have an ad set, which is a Laura Piana. Like everything is the same, except uh, everything is the same, except in one, we're targeting people who are interested in Laura Piana. And the one we're targeting people who are interested in Porsche as an example. And then we see which one works better. And then within like, let's say the Laura Piana one works better that, that, uh, interest targeting works better from there. We might split up between, um, uh, Laura Piana interest for both ad sets, 25 to 32 year old men. And then we might try 32 until 40 and then see which one works better. And then from there we can assign a bigger budget depending on the size of the audience that is. But my point is like the campaign level, you honestly, you don't have to do much thinking. Like I said, cold retargeting testing. That's it. It's, it's not rocket science. That's the other thing. If you see like an expert or this or that out there and like they, they have, they're dilute. This is, this is the main problem I see. They dilute their spend. Okay. They think they need all these different campaigns and ad sets and they, they get so complicated and granular with it, where they're like 20% of video views off this. And then if they like watch that retargeting video and then they get 20% video views off, off that. And it just, it, it, trust me, we we've tried all that. We spent years trying it. The best thing is treating it like a real scientific experiment. My point is at the campaign level, you don't need to do much thinking at the ad set level. That is where you're finding out which audiences. So let me also say this. Campaign level is like, what is the objective ad set level is like, who are we targeting? Who is receiving this and in what form? So for example, another thing that you can, uh, figure out at ad set level is should I run ads just for Facebook feed or should I run Facebook feed and bundle in other placements? So really at the ad set level, you're just figuring out like, who am I targeting and how am I reaching them at the ads level? That is okay. I know who I'm targeting and how I'm reaching them. Now at the ad level, you decide in what way am I reaching them? So at the ad level, obviously that is where you split test and you figure out what ads perform the best, like what image, what creative, what headline, et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is I'm coming up this year to my fourth anniversary of having an agency. And I'd say around two and a half years of having like a real advertising agency. I was so misled for so long because I looked at so many marketers and they had such a complicated setup in their ad account. And it's only when I realized like, what is the purpose of each step of the campaign? What is the purpose of the campaign? What is the purpose of the ad set? What is the purpose of the ads that I really learned to streamline things? And I learned like, what am I looking out for? What am I actually optimizing for? So here's an example right here of what, you know, here you might have a cold campaign within that you might have, you know, anywhere from three to, I mean, even 50 ad sets. Uh, and then within those ad sets, usually we have around three to five different ads. Now, what Facebook will do is in the first, let's say three hours or six hours or 12 hours, it will give them all even distribution, the ads. And then based on which ones are performing best, they'll take that small sample size, they'll extrapolate that, and then they'll assign higher budgets to that. So Facebook is actually optimizing that for you within the ad set level. Now to create a campaign, you'll need to go through the ads manager section of your business manager. Again, I've left a link to this in the description, but you can also access this by clicking on the three lines at the top left hand corner and clicking through, make sure you use the drop down menu in the top left hand corner to choose the correct ad account you want to advertise on. 
Next, you need to press the green create button. You'll be sent to this page where you can choose an objective for your campaign. Again, the only two objectives you'll ever really need to use are conversions and lead generation. In this training, we're going to be focusing on conversions rather than lead generation. However, I've also filmed another video where I go more in depth on lead generation. That is the three hour behemoth free training. So if you want some more extended free training uh, for Facebook uh, and you want especially uh, some more extended free training for uh, real estate agents, for gyms, for restaurants, for this, that, uh, local businesses, check out that free training in the description. I actually give you guys an entire six page plug and play at the end as a bonus for staying until the end. So just a little heads up. Now creating conversions, conversions come in two shapes and sizes. The first is standard events. Now, if you're an e-commerce company or work with one, when you integrate your pixel, it'll automatically create standard events such as add to cart and purchase. Now we often use custom conversions for our clients as this allows us to track a number of elements of the campaign. Setting one up is easy. You just need to feed Facebook with the URLs that correspond to the event. For example, tell Facebook that, you know, once a user uh, reaches the thank you page to downloading a free guide, they have completed a conversion. So just to drill down on that point a little more, the main difference between a custom conversion and a standard event is a custom conversion is based off of the URL. Okay. So once someone goes to a specific URL, you have told Facebook that they have achieved a certain custom conversion with standard event. It's based on code. So for example, like let's say someone purchased a product, you will put the um, standard event code in the purchase page. Okay. And then based on that code, then Facebook will know that they have uh, accomplished a specific outcome with us. We do both. First, we like to be even more sure in our tracking. Now, custom conversions are way easier to set up because there's no code that is involved. It's basically just based off of the URL, but standard events are definitely more accurate. We've, we found that. Now, in terms of creating your campaign, go back to ads manager. Now you should choose a conversion objective, give it a name and click through. Here's where you'll let Facebook know which conversion you would like the campaign to optimize for. Next, scroll down and choose your audience. Now, Facebook offers three types of audiences. The most common is saved audiences, and that's simply where you choose targeting based off of uh, interest, demographics and locations. You can create one for each ad or just save one to use it over again and again. Next is custom audiences. Now, these audiences can be created from a number of different sources, such as people who have visited your website, uh, people who have engaged with your Instagram page, or even watched one of your videos. Now this is used in the retargeting element of a campaign. Remember I told you we have three different campaigns, um, cold retargeting and testing. So as I said, that'll be used in the retargeting campaign. Now, you know, you're, you're going to want to target audiences that are already familiar with your brand within that campaign. Now, finally, there are lookalike audiences without being overly simple. Just in our experience, these don't work anymore. Actually, I, I will make a little caveat on that. All the way from April of 2018 until all, the rest of 2018 and the rest of 2019 look like audiences did not work. They did not work for us. One thing that I do want to say is in 2020, we found with our clients that there's actually been a little bit of a resurgence of look like audiences. So for any of you guys here who are actually, I mean, if you're just starting to advertise, test it out. Like that's the thing. Like we always test out some, I mean, we've, with some of our clients, we literally try no targeting at all, just demographic targeting. Okay. And we, we like to test out like broad versus interest targeting versus look like, you know, we, as I said, we, we like to try it. And what we found was in 2019, 2018 and 2019 look likes were dead. This year we found with some of our clients that look likes are actually making a bit of a resurgence. So just a little caveat. Now it's time to choose your budget. Now there's no hard and fast rule for budgets, but know that spending like to be honest, any less than $500 on a campaign is unlikely to yield any results or give Facebook a chance to find you an audience. That's for cold. That is for retargeting. I mean, also you can spend like, $5 a day on, uh, on a retargeting campaign uh, and it'll go to work. I'm saying more for cold. Now we recommend setting a daily budget and a limited schedule. Okay. Next, you'll need to choose the page you want to advertise on. If you've set up your pay a business manager uh, properly, you'll see a list of Facebook pages and Instagram pages you can choose from. If you don't have an Instagram account associated with your page, Facebook will create a blank one to serve your advert on Instagram for you. Now, finally, it's time to get into your individual adverts. The two elements to successful advert are the creative and the copy. Now, the creative is just a fancy term for the image or video that accompany the advert. Now, at this point, I should stress again that I've spent a fair amount of money on Facebook over the years, and I'm yet to find a better combination than a simple image and great copy. With that in mind, let's look at these two examples. Now, one of the most common mistakes advertisers make is, well, trying to make their adverts look like adverts. Okay. The one on the left is so obviously and so, um, it's so obnoxiously an advert and so intrusive in your newsfeed that you would automatically scroll away from it. Whereas the advert on the right uses simple lifestyle imagery and it looks so much better result. Food is one of the easiest things to promote on Facebook and Instagram because people want to see it. Like the one on the right genuinely just looks like a, a food blog. Okay. 
Um, next up, it's copy. Again, amateur advertisers like to use copy as a chance for them to flex their English language skills and come up with witty, pithy captions. You might think that you're clever, but the reality is you've written an advert and people don't like to read adverts. Okay. Compare the post on the right to the one on the left. It looks far more like a viral post that one of your friends might share It intrigues you and makes you wonder why you are always so tired. You want to click continue. You want to see what the rest of it entails. Okay. It invokes an emotional response in the reader. Everyone is always tired for the most part, <laughs> and you'll be far more likely to purchase the weighted blanket than you would after reading the advert on the left. Okay. Remember your best night's sleep yet. The one on the left, it just, it doesn't do anything for you. Whereas like the one on the right, if I was scrolling through my newsfeed and I stopped and I saw there's only one way to fix your sleep and it's not by drinking herbal teas. I would click on that. I drink herbal tea. Like I drink a loose leaf chamomile tea from a place called T2 shout out T2. Um, and I drink that before bed. So if I saw this, like I'd be hooked in like this almost looks like a editorial, like um, a blog post, like that sort of thing. Okay. That's the main thing that you want to do is you want to avoid your ad looking like an ad. Also just a little ode to our philosophy about image and medium to long form copy. I don't even want to talk about the amount of times I've had some smart ass try to butt in and be like, no man, you got to try video ads. Like they perform way better. But like, cool. Awesome. If that's worked for you, I'm just telling you in my experience over the years, 90 to 95% of the ads that we run both for my clients and for myself personally are direct response style image with ne pretty much never a graphic on it and medium to long form copy with a really strong hook and headline. That's the way we do it. It works for us. If there's something else that works for you better. Cool. I'm just here to relay. So to go live, all you do is you press confirm. So once again, some secret tips here, uh, free imagery websites like unsplash. This is way better than this next one. Pixabay because it, the thing is uh, Pixabay looks slightly too stock imagery, but nonetheless, they offer free high quality stock images. Next thing is watch your copy. Facebook doesn't allow advertisers that appeal to personal characteristics, offer scams or political in nature. So just check out the terms and conditions and buy a thesaurus. <laughs> Next thing is long form copy often works better. You'd be amazed how often people actually read long form copy. So don't be afraid to keep writing to hook your user in. Next thing, how to optimize your campaign. Now at the campaign level, you'll see your total spend to date, the number of conversions, you know, purchases, downloads, registrations, etc. Here you'll see a breakdown of results per ad set. Each ad set should contain one variable. I've explained this to you guys already. Next thing is you'll see a breakdown of the performance of each ad within an ad set. Now, Glossary. I've already mentioned this, but uh, or, or you should have this open. I mentioned the, the fact that uh, you should have the glossary open, but KPIs, this is a key performance indicator. So this is what you should be optimizing your campaign for results. The number of times your campaign objective slash conversion has been met link clicks. How many times users have clicked the link in your ad, regardless of conversion CPM, how much it costs you to reach a thousand people relevant score. Now this is an algorithmically uh, designated score based on your engagement and other factors between one to 10, the higher, the better, obviously. Now, in each step of the campaign, you'll want to assess the performance of the adverts. This is when you can start optimizing it was one ad set with different audience targeting performing better than the other. How, you know, has one piece of copy flopped is one creative resonating with users quite clearly. And uh, yeah, this is what it will look like. And you'll have all of your um, KPIs available to you there. So here's some more secret tips. I've already mentioned this, but just to drill this in once again, invest in page likes, set up auto response and set up comment moderation. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the action step for today's video. Number one, I want you to book in a call with my student integration managers, Max and Caden. You'll be assigned to either one, depending on what their availability is like. We would love to see if you're a good fit for agency incubator. As mentioned previously, I run the largest education company on earth for agency owners specifically. We also have the longest and most successful track record of delivering results to our student. In fact, you can just go ahead and check out the sales page. The link is in the description for agency incubator and just hear some stories from people all around the world. But nonetheless, I want you to book in a call with one of my student integration managers. We are always looking for new potential good fits to join agency incubator. So go ahead and book in a time with them. Next thing is go subscribe to the second channel for four uploads a week, longer form content and weekly giveaways. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that know me know, I like to make 45 minutes about very nuanced granular topics. 
here on the main channel, I kind of need to, you know, play to the YouTube algorithm and this and that. So that's why I created a second channel where I do 30 to 45 minute Q and A sessions where I do student interviews, where sometimes I interview clients of mine, like where I do longer form content about SMA, where I can get more specific. So go ahead and head on over there, subscribe, turn on the post notifications because I actually do weekly giveaways on there. So you're entitled to those. Last but not least is I want you to leave a comment with what you thought of this video. I'm going to go ahead and give away a coaching call for every hundred unique comments. I've done this once before and um, it's really awesome to speak to you guys. Obviously, I'm very busy with the agency and the education company. So let's do a 20 minute. That's still we got plenty of time to talk. But as I said, go ahead and leave a comment because for every hundred comments, I will do a 20 minute uh, coaching call giveaway. Also, go ahead and pin a comment in the description uh, with the winners thus far. So ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and complete those three action steps. I want to thank every single one of you guys for watching and staying this far. Look forward to announcing the giveaway winners in the description based on your comments. And on behalf of myself and the rest of the great agency team, we look forward to your call with the integration managers and hopefully seeing you join the community soon.